Okay, mm -hmm. so as everybody knows, if you have physical access to a network, security, all bets off. Yeah, assumably. Sure. Mm -hmm. For Arguably. the most part. Yeah. But now what happens if your physical access is limited to only a few seconds? Darren's found a, a neat little software thing that you can use on this to take care of what you need to do. Darren, what is this? Well, this is uh, a USB thumb drive, or as we have called it, you know, the switchblade, just because it's got this sweet little uh, slider. And, right. You know, the cruiser, it's pretty cool. Um, and I got to say that this was originally developed by some community members on our forums, mm -hmm. and uh, they've done a really awesome job of putting together some interesting tools to compromise systems when you have physical access. Okay. Now, this USB thumb drive is just a little bit different than the normal ones that you may already have. And that what, is what, what? What is that difference? What? It uses a piece of technology called U3 technology, okay. and what that basically does is puts a separate partition on this uh, on this little USB key here mm -hmm. that looks to Windows like a CD-ROM, which means it will auto, auto run, run because without question. Without question, because normally when you plug in a removable hard drive or a, or a USB key, it you know, you get a little pop-ups that says, "Hey, what do you want to do? You know, play music or photos or open mm -hmm. the folder." This. It's just like popping in a CD, like you know, you'd pop in your Battlefield 2 CD, and it pops up the installation. Right. Okay. So it's going to auto run. What? What's, what, what's it? What's it auto running? What, where? Where's this attack come in? Okay. It auto runs a special payload. Now, when you normally buy these from the store, they come with uh, some software from SanDisk that. Uh, this particular one has Skype on it and a few other mm. little applications. So when you pop it in, you can run you know, your little applications right off the drive, just like we've talked about before when Rob or Mubix came down on uh, episode 9 or 10 to talk about little applications for USB thumb drives. Right. And um, what we want to do is flash the you know, firmware or the little, um, uh, what would you the, say? The, the, the CD-ROM partition. The CD-ROM partition. Sorry, I'm a little loopy still. But uh, you would flash the um, CD-ROM partition with our own payload, and that would then run some scripts and some tools that are on the flash partition of this and allow us to get our black hat on. So what happens if you plug it into a Windows machine? Well, it will work on Windows 2000 and above machines. And the limitation on that is that it needs to be a, a machine that's logged in with administrative privileges. OK, so it's definitely a Windows-based attack, and you have to have administrative privileges to get anything done. Right, and you may run into some problems when it comes to educational networks and corporate networks with machines that are not right. you know, logged in by default as administrators. In our case, you know, I run as admin on Windows. I do as well. And you know, so it's, 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 different with, it's different with Windows and, and Unix, because in Unix, we won't run as root. Oh, no, never. But you can't get anything done in Windows unless, unless you're, you're administrator. Admin. So uh, a lot of times, this will come in handy. And there are some ways to escalate privileges to administrative status. Mm -hmm. We just don't have a way to that's do that automated right now. Right now, maybe somebody in the community will help develop that, but that's out of the scope of this. Right. Okay, okay so if you plug this in, mm -hmm. go ahead and do that right now. All right, and now it's access the, the that was it. That's it. That was it. It hacked it. That was it. it. Hacked. Right. I get this little, hey, removable disk, right? Mm -hmm. and now, it, that's the big partition. That's right. the actual USB thumb drive. So what happened? What, what did we just hack? What did we gain from this? Sure. Let's take a look at the scripts. OK, so if I go into my computer, you mm -hmm. can see that I have now the E drive, which is the CD-ROM partition, and I have the F drive. Now, when I open the CD-ROM partition, you see I have my auto run to INF file here. And if right. I edit that, you can see all it does is run this, this go.vbe. That's a Visual Basic script. Now, this go Visual Basic script is what allows us to invisibly run our payload, which is located on the uh, the read-write partition of our the USB CD, key. The, the pseudo CD-ROM. Oh, no, no, that, that on the removable drive. OK. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I'm sorry. So if we go into here, what it runs is in our WIP directory under mm -hmm. CMD, this CMD file or batch file, and that's what our payload is. So if I go ahead and uh, open this up in Notepad, I can see everything that this is doing. Now, what this is doing is it's doing uh, some PW dump to grab the LM hashes from that machine. It's also stealing product keys. It's getting our URL history from Internet Explorer. It's also getting, uh, it's creating a backdoor, which we'll get into later. It's 
uh, doing all sorts of fun stuff. In fact, in later versions and in another version that somebody else uh, uh, created, uh, Amish, created one that even steals um, your AIM and MSN passwords oh, really? and stuff like that. Yeah. Nice. So we're going to go ahead and close this. And it saves all of that to a file on the, on the, uh, the writable partition mm -hmm. under Documents and Log Files. And if we go in here, it names it based on computer name. Deep Blue being my workstation in my room, and Artbook being this notebook right here. Mm -hmm. OK. So we've got the information we need. What do we do with it now? Well, all we did was plug it in, wait a few seconds. It created that log file. We can eject it. We can head over to our machine back home. Mm -hmm. And now we can crack that hash. Right. Now this is an LM hash? This is an LM hash, and those have some certain weaknesses, which we'll talk about in a moment. So right. let's quickly take a look at the log file that this has created. Now, I've got an IP config in here, so I know what the IP address is of that machine so I can remotely access it later. It also gives me um, uh, the uh, LM hashes and gives me product keys, which I'll probably be blanking out in post, as well as uh, LSA secrets, which are uh, other interesting things that Windows stores that it probably shouldn't be doing. Right, right. Okay, so let's go into our command prompt and head over to the F drive. Okay. And head over to documents and head over to log files. And I'm going to um, write, or I'm sorry, I'm going to uh, type ardbook.log and I'm going to find dudeski. Okay, so now I can see this user on my system whose name is Dudeski, and I have his uh, LM hash. So I'm going to add that to a file in SQL and backslash um, rainbow crack backslash passwd.txt. Okay? Okay, so now we've written that hash to password.txt in my in the rainbow crack directory. Right. right. Now, Rainbow Crack, uh, we, we've talked about this a little bit before, but Rainbow Crack is basically a tool that allows us to use Rainbow Tables or pre-computed time memory trade-off tables mm -hmm. to you know, crack passwords. And it's very efficient. Right. But we've talked about those before. Yeah. And so let's just go ahead and get into the attack. So now that I have that hash, I can go ahead and run rcrack star dot rt, and I'm using the three gigabyte Rainbow Tables. And I tell it dash f uh, pass wd.txt. So now it's going to go ahead and load up those three gigabytes of rainbow tables, mm -hmm. and it's going to start uh, computing those against the hashes that it knows and um, see if we can get the clear text from it. Right. OK. And so now what we're, now what we're talking about with the land manager hash is it's an unsecure password. And this is general overview, overview but it's an unsecure password. It's a hash that's hash. based on DES. Right. And it takes the password and divides it into two seven-character hashes. Correct. And then from there, it's just going to break down each half. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and it also, one of the other weaknesses is it converts everything to uppercase. So if you've got right. lowercase, uppercase, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. matter. Right. Which makes it an insecure password. Now, so I'd imagine that the best way to defeat this kind of cracking is to not let Windows make an LM hash. Exactly. And there is a uh, registry edit that you can do so that Windows will not store LM hashes. And those are for backwards compatibility mm -hmm. with 98, 95, and ME computers on your network. If you don't have any of those, you don't need LM hashes. And it's probably better to just turn them off anyway. Now, just assuming that you needed to keep those, which at this point, it wouldn't matter anyway. Nobody runs that anymore. So well, scratch I would say nobody, but, but you're right. Another reasons. another option is is to use a ca uh, a password that has 15 or more characters because it can't divide that into two, and then it can't store the LM hash. Exactly. So a good idea would be to uh, create a passphrase such as "rent is due on the fifth or "my first computer was a IBM PCXT." I mean, you're not going to forget stuff like that, mm -hmm. and it makes for a pretty Mary long. Had a little secure. lamb, and her fleece was white as S N zero W. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. That's a, that's a whole other discussion is past phrases, but 15 characters are highest, which you need to remember there. And special characters, upper or lower case yeah. numbers. I also need to mention that another thing that we've noticed in the lab testing this mm -hmm. is that uh, another preventative or way me measure to prevent against this attack is that if you're running a, a, an antivirus, in our case, we were running uh, Norton, or, I'm sorry, Semantic Antivirus Corporate Edition, mm -hmm. uh, noticed the PW dump tool and uh, was able to catch it before it could run. OK, so it just it so nipped I'm it in the bud. And right, so I'm sure that McAfee and other uh, you know, um, big name uh, antivirus software will probably you know, prevent that, this key from you know, 
right. owning that machine as well. Okay. But let's talk about the back door for a second while this door. still cracks. Okay. It, it's, it's crunching it's along here pretty well. Coming away. Okay, so if I pull up my computer manager, and I click that twice, so it's going to take a second. Okay. There you go. So I've got my computer manager up in here, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking at users. Um, there's this user here called support underscore 3889 blah, 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 right? That is the uh, user that Windows XP uses for remote administration. Now, this is remote administration. Oh, I'm sorry, remote assistance. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Remote assistance, kind of like how uh, when Mubix was helping me with the Gen 2 install, and I had something kind of quirky happen that I couldn't figure out. So he was able to connect to my machine over the internet and exit uh, and use the command line mm -hmm. as if he were there. It's, 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 it's just like that, or it's the Windows equivalent. It's just like VLC, which we've talked to uh, talked about uh, much mm -hmm. in the past. It's like a remote desktop. So um, that user is in there by default, but it's also locked. So what this does is creates another user with a very similar name. The only difference is the one on the end here. And if I open this up and take a look at its membership, it's actually a member of the administrator's group. So now uh, we have created a user with administrator privileges on our target machine within seconds. And we have remote and access we also to that. So we have, remote, we have the IP address, we have our own user that we've created, and that's with a password that we've generated mm -hmm. in our go.cmd file, our payload. In my case, I made it Hacks or Flakes, because you can't go wrong with Hacks or Flakes. Of course not. So how's our uh, rainbow crack coming along? It's humming along nicely. So it should be done here momentarily. I think it's taking a little bit longer because we're running the uh, uh, Cam Studio software to record the screen right. at the same time that it's cracking. Okay, um, so uh, well, while that hums away, let's go ahead and talk about uh, where we can find any kind of further information with this. Sure. Uh, interesting thing about this exploit was that two people came to me with the same with the with very similar exploits. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them's name's Max Damage, and he's the one that uh, created the tool that reimages the uh, U3 partition on this type of flash drive and allows it to do it automatically with that virtual CD-ROM partition. And the other one, his name is Amish, and he's come up with one that'll work on USB drives uh, without the U3 technology, using a little bit of social engineering. And we've got a write-up on both of those in our show notes on the wiki. Okay, and so it looks like right here, the rainbow crack's done. Rainbow crack is done, and as we can see down here, the uh, result is username Dudeski, password, one, two, lowercase q, w, a, s, capital Z, capital X. So he has numbers, he's got lowercase, he's got uppercase. You would think that and was a secure. And it's eight characters. Yeah. By many corporate standards, that meets criteria. In fact, by... by Google um, standards. No, no, by uh, Windows 2003 server standards, mm -hmm. you need eight characters, uh, at least two lowercase, two capitals, and two numbers. So that, by Windows 2003, would be a secure password. And as we can see, with a three gigabyte rainbow table in about two minutes, of work cracking in about three seconds of retrieving time, mm -hmm. we've been able to own that machine. Wow, wow. So you know what, Darren, I don't want to see that anywhere near my box. But you've got to sleep sometime.